KMI Learning, learning that builds business. Build great content. This is a collection of short segments from courses that KMI has created for our clients. It is intended to provide you with examples of our work and how we have specifically addressed some of the most challenging training concerns our clients have given us. These courses have saved money, saved lives, improved productivity and quality, and made new employees more productive in a much shorter time. Here's an overview of the two vehicles most commonly used in receiving. The Pacer Truck. This is used to unload trailers and handle product on the receiving dock. Single and double pallet walkie. These are used to unload trailers and stage pallets on the receiving dock. Select all the items below that you may need when receiving. Every item on this delivery is associated with the ASN number. The barcode will be scanned when you're ready to begin using the RF to receive the shipment into inventory. Let's take a look at how we use the RF gun to receive a whole pallet that contains several cases of a single product. After logging into the RF, this screen appears. Press number 6 for the receiving with put away function and then press enter. Remember that when it comes to your job in receiving, accuracy is very important. Accuracy when receiving products into your warehouse makes life better for all of your teammates and your leads and supervisors. More importantly, it makes life better for customers and the patients who rely on them every day. Accuracy helps save people's lives. Welcome to this short course on pallet building. We want to help you make smart decisions and we want to be able to deliver pallets that are well built and reflect well on our company. This is Terrence. We're going to follow Terrence as he picks his order and builds his pallet. We'll see many examples of right and wrong ways to do things. Here, Terrence is giving an example of the incorrect placement of heavy items. These cases of nutrients are heavy and can crush boxes below them. Here's the correct way of dealing with heavy items. Look at the pallet and click on everything that you think is wrong. You can spin the pallet by clicking the blue arrows on the small pallet symbol in the upper left hand corner. Terrence is going to rebuild this for us, showing us the proper way the pallet should be built. This is Gary Wachter. Gary is what we call a high performer because he regularly completes his work orders in less time than is allotted by ProTrack. We're going to follow Gary through a real work order and watch how he gains time at ProTrack at each pick. He has lined up his pallet with the cartons he's picking so that he does not have to take steps either way to place them. He picks up multiple cartons and with one smooth move places them right where he wants them on the pallet without having to take any steps. He's gained one minute and 11 seconds. One, three. Pick three, cases, put, position one. Now this is good walkie placement. He's about 18 inches from the side of the aisle he's picking, and there is room for other workers to get by him. Welcome to this short course on pallet wrapping by hand. In an earlier course, we talked about how to stack a pallet correctly. Now we turn to how to correctly hand wrap a pallet once it's built. Let's see what happens to pallets on the truck. The poorly wrapped pallet starts to shake apart. As the trip progresses, it begins to lean and then finally collapses. First, we're going to show you the wrong way to wrap a pallet. Here, he's not pulling the wrap tight enough to hold the pallet together. Leaving gaps weakens the wrap as it does not adhere to the layers above and below. He's now going to show us the right way to wrap a pallet. Here, he is making sure that the wrap covers part of the pallet itself to connect the product to the pallet. This is Jamie. Jamie is a high performer because she regularly completes her work orders in less time than is allotted by ProTrack. Jamie picks up her work order and begins her cart setup. Here's something that Jamie does that is a little unusual but very smart. 
She writes the carton check digits on the carton flaps so that she can see them from a distance. If I'm coming out of the aisle and I see it, I can say it before I get to it. If I've got it here in a black marker, I can see it, I can drop it in, I'm good, I go. Here, Jamie has to pick a number of eaches from a bin. There are more than she can comfortably carry in one trip, so she makes two trips. That's the wrong way. Here's the right way. She opts to take the carton off her cart to the bin. Here, she applies the same idea to a pick with lots of little items. In our ongoing effort to always be more competitive by being more efficient, Operations has developed new shipping dock procedures. These procedures enable picking and shipping associates to better organize, stage, load, and ship products to our customers. Associates who picked and staged orders in the past were required to stage orders near the dock door from which the product would be shipped. The process resulted in dock associates spending significant time searching all lanes to find and marry product going to the same customer. As you'll soon see, our new procedures will now require pickers to identify the specific lane to which they stage products and use the system-directed staging to stage customers closer together within the designated staging lanes. To continue to be successful, we need to always find ways to become more efficient while serving our customers. This little movie is about OSIs, or operational service issues. That's engineer speak for mistake, or error, or screw up. This is Marta Ortega. She's stuck in her house, healing from an operation. So Lisa orders a walker with wheels for Marta. Bob is a good picker. He's fast, and he's usually accurate. Usually. But on this Monday, Bob spent a bit too much time telling a co-worker about his weekend, so now he's in a hurry. On Wednesday, Lisa opens the box and notices, to her dismay, that she's got a shower chair. Not what she ordered. She immediately calls customer service. Medline customer service enters the return. Then they issue an RGA. Then a replacement order. And then they issue a new invoice for the walker. <sighs> and then it's done. You can see that Bob's simple mistake cost us a lot. That's the average amount that we lose for each OSI. Now we're going to look at the most common OSIs and what we can do to avoid them. Wrong unit of measure picked. Picking the wrong unit of measure usually happens when pickers fail to look for the master carton warning label. We should never ship master cartons. They need to be opened and the inner pack picked and sent. For those of you who came to this video on YouTube, please visit us at kmilearning.com. Thanks for your time.